that. I want to extend the conversation here on that front uh, with the idea and the focus here and on labor, of course, frontline workers, uh, obviously very much wanting to see an increase in the seriousness in which this country approaches the coronavirus pandemic. And for more on that, I want to bring on uh, the leader of the largest federation of unions in the United States, the president of the AFL-CIO, Richard Trumka, joins us once again. Uh, Mr. Trumka, good to have you back on with us today. Uh, of course, Thanks. you guys endorsed Joe Biden for president back in May. Uh, we've come a long way since then. You were on with us just as uh, President Biden was winning the election, and you made it pretty clear that a lot of workers out there felt abandoned by President Trump. So what are you going to want to see uh, President Biden flex on the issue of labor? And I know you just spoke with him a few days before inauguration. So what are your expectations having connected with him? Well, first of all, Zach, let me say this. Uh, I think workers woke up with hope in their heart today uh, because dignity and humanity and optimism and compassion have been restored to the White House. Uh, yesterday was a good day. Uh, but look, here's what we need to happen. We need some bold and decisive action to address the inequality of income, the inequality of opportunity, and the inequality of power. We need Democrats and Republicans to work together to get the pandemic under control first, to keep workers safe, to make massive investments in America's infrastructure, and then get rid of our antiquated labor laws that have prevented workers from getting fair wages and benefits and economic security. We think that the Biden administration is committed to that, and we're committed to working with them to make sure that that becomes a reality. And you've got a potentially big ally in the cabinet there if, in fact, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh is uh, approved or is confirmed as the labor secretary. Uh, he's a former union member. How, what conversations have you had with him? And, and, and how do you think having a former union guy in that post uh, increases the likelihood of some of these reforms that you just mentioned getting passed? Well, first of all, Marty, uh, for the first time in recent history, the Secretary of Labor is going to have standing inside the cabinet, also going to have standing up on the Hill with Democrats and Republicans alike. Uh, Marty carried the tools so he knows what workers need. We don't have to go and tell him everything. He understands that. And he comes with a, a strength and a clarity uh, and a power uh, that most other people don't have because he was a worker. We also understand how to get things done. He was mayor of uh, Boston. He knows how to work with people of both sides of, of the aisle. He'll do that. The most important thing is, I think, though, he has the ear of the president and the respect of the president. And now we're, a worker's voice will be at the cabinet and it'll be heard loud and clear because one of us will be at the cabinet speaking at all times. Yeah, Mr. Trump, as I said, you were critical of, of kind of the lack of protections in place uh, before. Uh, you said OSHA has become a cadaver last time we chatted here. Uh, I'd be curious to get your take on maybe what protections you want to come see through here as we keep uh, you know, hearing uh, the Defense Production Act being flexed here, uh, more, more concerns as cases continue to rise. So what protections do you want to see uh, in the early days? Well, first of all, I think we need a, a pandemic, an emergency pandemic standard. Uh, the administration is committed to getting that done so that we have enforceable standards on the job. Second of all, they're committed to getting, using the Defense Production Act, to get enough PPE on the jobs to protect our members. Uh, and then third of all, they're committing to helping us get flex grants to the states so that the states can actually help us at the job level. Uh, our employers... If we work together with them and we work together with the state and local federal governments, I think we can get this pandemic under control. We can get the economy running back again and we can protect workers in the process. President Biden is committed to worker health and safety. He knows that it's more than just coming home from work. If you come home from work sick, you've failed. So our job is to make sure that those essential workers not only come home from work safe and sound, but they're healthy as well. Uh, Richard, you're talking about wages and benefits, but of course, safety, another key issue here that has emerged, especially for these essential workers you talked about. Um, where does the union stand right now on mandatory vaccinations? That's something a lot of companies are struggling with, whether in fact they should require their employees to get it. Uh, what do you think about that? Where do you stand on that conversation? 
look, we're going to encourage everybody to get vaccinated. Uh, that's the solution to all of this. If we vaccinate people, we really do get uh, to the place where we can get the pandemic under control, and then we can actually move our economy forward again. We can create the jobs that have been lost. We can change the rules so that everybody wins in this economy. But it, may, it starts with vaccinations. And we're going to be for uh, getting everybody vaccinated that we can. It's a complex issue when you come to mandating it. Should it be mandated at the federal level? Should it be mandated at the state level? Because if you go just employer to employer, you're going to get a, a high and a low there that may not be the best way to do it. So we're looking at it. We're working with the administration and we're going to work with our employers to make sure that we can get everybody vaccinated as fast as we can. Uh, let's talk quickly about big tech. Uh, this is one of those uh, sectors that have long resisted organization among their employees and yet Earlier uh, this month, we had Google establish its union, the Alphabet uh, Workers Union. Uh, we're talking still a very small part of the employee, the work base. So not necessarily the same kind of unions that we would think about traditionally. How does the AFL-CIO see, um, you know, how do you see your role in helping facilitate some of these conversations? And have you had direct talks, uh, at least with Google's union? Well, first of all, we need to change the labor laws in this country because they're antiquated. They were drafted back in the 70s, and instead of helping workers get better wages and better benefits and job security, they're used to lower wages, take away benefits, and take away economic security. So first thing we have to do is change those laws so that they're modern, up-to-date, and they apply to people like Google and Facebook and, and all the others uh, in, in the tech sector. Uh, second of all, we have had conversations with them. We want to work with them. Uh, we think that uh, we can help them uh, be better companies, better run companies, and we can help their employees. And I can tell you this, their employees sure are interested in having a voice on the job because they've been getting ground up by those high tech companies, just like they got ground up by coal mines back at the turn of the century. They don't get listened to. They don't get a fair shake. They don't get the security that they're entitled to. So we're working with the employees to make sure that they get a voice on the job as well. Well, Richard Trump, I appreciate you coming back on here uh, again, just to maybe put an exclamation point on it. Interesting symbolism uh, of seeing uh, President Biden also add and feature the bust of one of the nation's most celebrated labor rights activists in Cesar Chavez in that office. Very interesting to see there. Uh, love, to, love to have you back on whenever you're free to continue this conversation. But thanks for joining us today. Zach, anytime you want me on, give me a shout. I'll be happy to come back on. Take care and stay safe, my friend.